So, Plash Palatka. As far as I understand it, that means poncho tent in the Russian language. And John Sherwood um, put me onto these. I had kind of seen inklings of them before, but John Sherwood did a, a video on one that he'd recently acquired, and I was very impressed with them. And since then, I've been all over YouTube. I think I've probably watched every single YouTube video in a number of different languages. They seem to have a bit of a cult following. Um, so I decided I wanted to try one. I thought it would suit what I'm doing here. Now, I'm not bashing the basher or the uh, you know the ripstop flies, but for what I do, a lot of open fire camping, things like that, they've only got to get a little ember on them and there's a hole in them if they're nylon. So I wanted something with canvas. Um, I couldn't find anything the right weight, so I ended up going for this stuff, which is real heavyweight canvas. I'm hoping that uh, this is going to do the job. Um, it'll certainly be tough enough, but it's whether it'll be kind of light and flexible enough. Uh, so rather than go too light on the material, I've gone a bit heavy, but that's okay. And uh, I'm going to make one. Why am I going to make one? Well, in the Eastern Bloc, if you want to buy one, I hear it's about 10 to 20 US dollars. You can get them on Amazon, I think. If you want to get one shipped in the States, it doubles to about 40 dollars. And down here in Trinidad, if I want to try and get one down here, having done that, I think it's going to double again, and I'm going to end up paying <laughs> nearly 100 US for six square feet of canvas. So that ain't happening, so I went down and got some material. I'm going to see if I can't put one together. I know how to drive a sewing machine, so um, I think I stand a chance. This isn't really a, um, a tutorial video, more of a kind of a build-along, I guess. Um, but I do show a little bit of putting it together. Um, if you want to skip that bit, then just skip ahead a couple of minutes and you'll get to the, to the micro-adventure. Uh, so I'm going to use straight edge scissors, the usual thing. This is my trusty Sailrite Sailmaker, one of the early models. They don't make these anymore, but it's a nice heavyweight machine. Um, it can handle pretty much anything you put under the foot there. If it fits under there, this thing will stitch it, including plywood, I think. This is something else I'll be using, which is a um, this is a proprietary one. They call it a tailor trick. It's just a bit of hardwood. It's a hardwood shaped stick, and you may or may not know that you can score seams using this in a straight edge and fold them. It makes things a lot easier. And I'll just show a little clip of that in a minute. All right. Well, here we go. Let's see what I can do. Enjoy. It's a short bit of footage, it's not going to get hot. Here it is then, the finished item, my version of the Russian Plash Palatka, 72 inches square, which is 1 meter 80 traditionally, I think I've got mine a little, just a hair bigger, uh, which gives it a diagonal measurement of 255 centimeters, approximately 7 feet 8 inches. Same there, that's the same for the collar, what would be the collar when you pull the drawstring, and then the two at the top there are for the hood. 
I made some toggles. You know, I had to make those out of bamboo. There's some toggle detail there. Some for the side seams with corresponding. I, I don't think uh, on the originals they have webbing um, loops, but that's what I had, and it's nice and strong, so I thought I'd do that. Um, here's a one of the leather grommets stitched in from my bit of old safety boot leather. I'll find one here that's not finished. One thing I like about the Clash Palatka design is that they've, by making this hood in the corner, they've eliminated the hole in what would be your tarp when you're using it. So instead of having a hole for your head for the hood, they've eliminated that so you can maintain that kind of square of canvas for the tarp. Really cool idea. Sounds like a good reason to go out on a micro adventure. Let's go and find some rain. Well, I've got to say that it's a little bit tight for a guy that's six feet, but I do fit and I am dry. I'm dry enough to make, take the uh, case off the camera so I can use a microphone. And uh, a couple of little leaks. Looks like I've got to beeswax the seams in a couple of places. But other than that, I'm very pleased with it. It's perfect for these kind of conditions where it rains very hard not for very long, but it's straight up and down rain. It comes down like welding rods, but it's um, straight down. So an open shelter like this, a plow point, will work because the rain's not getting, you know, when you're in the bush, there's not a lot of wind really. The bush stops the wind. Sometimes there is, but generally it's straight down, just torrential rain. And this thing is doing a fantastic job. Not a lot of clearance as you can see, but I don't know where I'm going to put Spudley. There's something about the sound of rain on canvas. Not on the tarp, and the plastic tarp is very loud, even light rain is quite noisy. But there's something soft and almost hypnotic about rain falling on canvas.
So I've got it set up in the garden here in the flying diamond configuration. Um, and so what's the verdict? The verdict is it suits me down to the ground. It's I've definitely built it on the heavy side. Well, when I say heavy, it's too heavy for a poncho, about right for a tent, and perfect for a ground sheet. And I suppose with all these things, it's a compromise. So they're a great, uh, they're a great thing. I'd love to have had an original one, made of the right stuff, probably slightly lighter than this. Uh, but uh, that wasn't possible, so I had to improvise. You can see, I've got this rigged at the moment with my hammock under it, and in this configuration. Because I've got a short hammock, it's only about eight feet. Um, it fits, just fits. I've still got to give it a bit of a test in the rain. I know that I'm going to have to rig it quite low so that I'm covered. Um, but it looks like it's going to work. So I'd say it's it's about the minimum size you want to be. So, well, there it is. You'll see this out on some of my micro adventures going forward, no doubt. So to all my enablers, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.